And horses mirror you. They mirror your attitude and your approach really affect your horse. Your attentions are easily read by a horse. So um, it's really funny for me to watch um, beginners with one of my horses because my horses can read them like a motor scan. And they'll be like, oh, he doesn't mean it. That's cute. <laughs> like, I'll just stand here. Or they'll be like, oh, I like you. Like, I'll just stand closer. You know, because they know whether we're going to follow through with what we ask for. Like, are you just going to, like, suggest it? Or are you going to go all the way through and make your, uh, your thought clear to your horse? And, um... The great thing about horses is they never lie, even when you kind of wish they would. <laughs> and horses give you immediate, unbiased feedback on how you show up and how you present things to your horse. So one thing that I really stress to people is the setup is a lot. If I go into something and I don't prepare my horse for it and I don't get them in the box mentally, then you know, it can all just fall apart because I didn't show up as a leader and prepare him for that. Anyway, so flip over to the next page. We have what makes a good leader, being consistent, as we said. You know, your phases are only worth so much, and your sequence of training is only worth so much if you're not consistent. And that's where I make tons of money as a, as a trainer is because people are really inconsistent, you know? Um, so just being consistent with cues and phases of reinforcement and whatever that looks like to you. It just needs to be the same every time. How you set it up, which means how you present it to your horse. So, you know, if I want to do some ranch sorting and do some cow working on my horse, I'm not just going to go into the cattle pen and expect it to go really well. I'm going to take my horse out here. We're going to do a warm-up. I'm going to let my horse move his feet, get whatever he has in his system out, and then I'm going to do work on my stops. I'm going to work on my turns. I want to break it down and say, what does this maneuver or what does this job um, have, what are the pieces of it that I need to be working for me when I go to do that? And a little prior planning can go a long way. And sometimes um, just getting your horse relaxed before you do something makes all the difference. You know, if you know the sequences of dressage, relaxation and forward movement is the very bottom tier for a reason. Those things go hand in hand together. They're so important. Next thing is having a plan and a strong focus. And, you know, the plan identifies clear boundaries. So to me, I have like a GPS map out in my mind of where I want my horse's feet to be on. And I have like guardrails essentially of where, you know, if my horse passes this cone, I'm gonna, he's gonna get in trouble because we got off path and I'm gonna bring him back to my path where I wanted him. And um, to me, when I see an open arena that has nothing on it, I see patterns. And I see tons of stuff I can do with my horse. So if you can start developing that within yourself, and some of that just means you might have to plan a little bit more, it doesn't come naturally to you and say, at what point has my horse made a mistake enough that I need to correct them, you know? Have a, a marker in your mind or a marker in the arena so that you know when to correct your horse. Because that helps us not micromanage our horse. So I think everybody can, can identify with this. Well, we've all been told not to do things, but when you experience why you shouldn't do those things, it's a lot easier, right? <laughs> you know, nobody wants to take their word, somebody else's word for it. So, your horse is the same way, and I'm a big fan of letting your horse explore all their options. I want them to know, with beyond a shadow of a doubt, that what I wanted them to do is the right answer. 
And if I constantly micromanage my horse and I don't let them go over there, they're always going to think there's a better option. Um, so I got to work on my setup and help my horse understand that what I want them to do is the right thing. And, you know, a lot of that's timing and sweet talking them into it, right? Um, I had a horse, um, a pony actually, never get a pony. <laughs> and uh, it's true, you know, the smaller they are, the closer to hell they are. <laughs> this is very much true. And I was just trying to do a simple, like, four quarter yield, a little spin. And by golly, he tried all the wrong answers. He tried rearing. When rearing didn't work, he tried bucking. When bucking didn't work, he tried rolling. And when rolling didn't work, we tried bolting. And then when bolting didn't work, by golly, we finally tried that four quarter yield. It wasn't pretty, but we but he got arrested. <laughs> so, you know, letting your horse explore that and then running into pressure to help re guide them to what you want them to do, and then they get a break, they're like, oh, maybe I should listen to her more often. This works out a whole lot better. So, you kind of have to show your horse you're worth, you're worth following. So, and the other thing is to be in a position to be effective. A lot of beginners, I'll see them, they'll, they'll do something with their horse and their stick's lying on the ground, and then their horse goes to run over the top of them, and they've got nothing left to do, you know? So, be in a position to be effective. If you can't give your horse in, more information to make it clear to him what he should do, then you need to set yourself up, you know? Have a crop, have a spur, have something to give your horse a little more information so that he can find the right answer. And, you know, the attitude of a leader, I think, is really important. Um, and, you know, expectations can really work against us as riders sometimes. And, and some people don't expect <laughs> enough of their horses, and so their horse never shows up for them. And then other people, like myself, I expect too much from my horse, and then it puts too much pressure on them, and then they don't learn. So there's, there's a balance there. It's like, I expect you to show up here, but I'm willing to work with you and to give you more information so that you can get there. And that's, that's kind of how I try to approach it. And like, expect resistance. Expect bad days. You know, don't be surprised when your horse does it wrong. You know, to me, like, I've gotten to where it's just like, well, that's good feedback. That didn't, that technique did not work. So I need to change something with me versus feeling like, it's my fault it went wrong. You know, it's okay. You have a 50-50 chance of doing something with your horse and it being right or wrong. So just try it. <coughs> Be committed to your decision and then see what your horse has to say about it. Was it right? Was it too much pressure? Was it not enough? That's what's important. So, and I also think it's important to know, like, what a partner looks like in your horse. And, you know, some of this is individual, like, what you want in a horse. And some of it's, like, universal. You know, I can trust that my horse can manage his feet, and he trusts me not to hurt him. You know, that's a very basic level. To me, I want my communication to have flow and kind of an ease to it. And part of that's building your communication. And the other part is getting to know your horse really well. And, you know, riding them a lot to where, you know, my horse can cover for me. That's the kind of horse I want. If I'm off a centimeter and I didn't ask for the lead change quite right, I want my horse to be like, oh yeah, she means this. I know she's having a bad day. <laughs> she's, a, she's not riding too great today, so I'll give it to her anyways. That's the kind of horse I want, you know, the, to pick up the slack for me. So, and, you know, I expect and I will build into my horse that emotional fitness. So, you know, things like High speed events, that, that's a, a, something that requires emotional fitness from your horse. Trail riding, you know, all these things. Um, you know, and having the leadership to say, hey, we're okay, and your horse trusting that. 
you know. And then connection. And connection to me is they're mentally engaged with what I'm doing. Their mind is in it. And they're listening. And, you know, that's when you can start turning that preamble into a partner. And, you know, a good question to ask yourself is, is your horse responding to you out of fear or out of willingness? Uh, a really great saying that I love from uh, the Ranch Versatility Rulebook is willingly guided. There's like so many horses that just aren't willingly guided. Like, I'll ride my horse around and I'm like, ooh, that was a little resistance there. Ooh, that, that stop didn't feel too great. You know, it, it's getting the mindset of, was my horse willingly guided? Was it easy to stop, go, and turn? You know, that's at the end of the day, we all want a horse that does that. And, you know, the, the keys to communication is consistent phases, follow through, your believability as a leader, and building that connection and understanding. So, you know, it's one thing for my horse to tell my horse to turn to the right, and it's another thing for him to understand why we turn to the right, and giving him purpose to that. So, that's all I got. So, I think we're going to take a little break.